friends, welcome to Sunday Mass with Children. We are so glad that you can join us on this adventure to learn more about our faith. This week, we celebrate the third Sunday of Advent, also known as Gaudate Sunday. You will notice that the colour of the candle and the priest vestment are pink or rose. This reminds us that we are midway through our preparation for the birth of Jesus, our Saviour and our true joy. Hi kids! Thank you for sharing your amazing artwork with us week after week on Little Faith Steps. The entries from our local and international friends are colourful and inspiring. We are always encouraged by your sharings and beautiful artwork. Keep them coming. Last week, we learned more about peace and how Jesus is our Prince of Peace. This week, we are going to learn more about joy. Let us first light the candle of joy on the Advent wreath and begin with a prayer and a song to Jesus. The Advent wreath reminds us that the light of Christ is coming into the world. As the light gets brighter every week, we wait with great hope for Jesus the light who will shine through the darkness at Christmas. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us your Son, Jesus, who shows us how to live. Holy Spirit, help us to make the joy of the Lord our strength. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us sing of the joy that only God can give.
kids and welcome back. Are you ready to listen to the Word of God today? Awesome! In Isaiah chapter 61 verse 10, the prophet Isaiah proclaimed with immense joy, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. I wonder what this joy that prophet Isaiah is proclaiming about. Where does this joy come from? Is it a joy in achieving something? A joy in having something? Or is it a joy in being popular among people? The joy that Prophet Isaiah was proclaiming about was the joy found in waiting for God's promise of mercy and salvation for the Israelites through the Messiah. This same joy is found in Luke chapter 2, verse 10 to 11. An angel of the Lord said this to the shepherds in the fields at night watch. Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. Jesus is the good news that brings great joy to all of us. Jesus brings a joy that is everlasting. His joy is found in following Him and living out the kingdom of God here on earth. It's a joy that overflows and we can help but share it with others. We do this with great joy until Jesus comes again. The Catholic Church in Singapore has experienced such a joy in the last 200 years. The early Catholics in Singapore have inspired the mission of the church to continue to grow towards a vibrant, evangelizing and missionary church. We are called to do the same by passing on our faith. God has been guiding the Catholic Church in Singapore faithfully over the last 200 years. We have so much to be thankful for. Let us sing of God's greatness and goodness. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps Himself in light And darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me. How great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The God that free in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great!
For this week's activity, go to our Facebook page, Little Faith Steps. Like our page and share your works in the comments section with us. This week, think about how you can go about your daily activities with joy. Be a bearer of joy for Jesus. Don't forget to use the Advent calendar to guide you on your Advent journey. It is now time to set up your altar table and prepare for Holy Mass. Take a moment now to get these items and see you in a while. Oh, don't forget to take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag CatholicMarsAtHome. Let us now settle down, sit in front of your altar table, take a moment to be silent and prepare for Holy Mass. Welcome, my brothers and sisters in Christ to the Holy Mass with Children. Thank you for joining us to sing songs of praise and to learn more about a joy, which is the theme of the third Sunday of Advent. There's nothing like giving God our hands and our voices to worship Him as our loving Father. Let us now worship the Lord together on this third Sunday of Advent, 13 December 2020. We offer up this Mass for all children that they may find joy in knowing that the Lord is already with them, and may they bring the joy of the Lord to all they meet. Join us in singing the processional hymn. Hello children, hello parents at home watching this online Mass, Mass with children. And we welcome you to this celebration for all of you from all over the world, also here in Singapore. Today we are commemorating the third Sunday of Advent. And it's a very special Sunday. Why? Because we call this the Sunday of joy. Joy. Why are we so joyful? Because here in Singapore, my dear friends, we have just launched the Catholic 200 SG celebrations. What is this Catholic 200 SG celebrations? It is to mark the 200th anniversary of Catholicism or the presence of the Catholic Church here in Singapore. More about it later in the video. So dear children, let us all begin this Mass together. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. Today, dear children, is the third Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of joy. Our joy is in God and in His Son, Jesus Christ. Like peace, joy is a gift from God. It overtakes us and fills us when we remember what God has done and what He has promised to do. 
So let us pray. O God of joy, Emmanuel, send your light into our hearts at this time. Help us to be ready for the time of Christ's appearing. Fix our hearts and our minds upon those things you have done and those you have promised to do, that we may have the joy you have promised. As we worship you, strengthen us so that we may always do your will and so bless you and the world you have made. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, dear friends, those of you who have got your advent wreaths at home, we begin to light the third candle. We light this candle today to remind us that Christ came and is coming, so that all people might have a rich and abundant life. We thank God for the hope He gives us, for the peace He bestows, and the joy He pours into our hearts. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up hearts that are broken, to proclaim liberty to captives, freedom to those in prison, to proclaim a year of favour from the Lord. I exult for joy in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me in the garments of salvation. He has wrapped me in the cloak of integrity. Like a bright groom wearing his wreath. Like a bride adorned in her jewels. For as the earth makes fresh things grow. As a garden makes seeds spring up. So will the Lord make both integrity and praise. Spring up in the sight of the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God. My
A reading from the first letter of Saint Paul to the Thessalonians: Be happy at all times, pray constantly, and for all things give thanks to God, because this is what God expects you to do in Christ Jesus. Never try to suppress the spirit or treat the gift of prophecy with contempt. Think before you do anything. Hold on to what is good, and avoid every form of evil. May the God of peace make you perfect and holy, and may you all be kept safe and blameless, spirit, soul, and body, for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has called you, and He will not fail you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. A man came sent by God. His name was John. He came as a witness, as a witness to speak for the light, so that everyone might believe through him. He was not the light, only a witness to speak for the light. This is how John appeared as a witness. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He not only declared, but he declared quite openly, I am not the Christ. Well then, they asked, Are you Elijah? I am not, he said. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We must take back an answer to those who sent us. What have you to say about yourself? So John said, I am as Isaiah prophesied, a voice that cries in the wilderness, Make a straight way for the Lord. Now these men had been sent by the Pharisees, and they put this further question to him. Why are you baptizing if you are not the Christ, and not Elijah, and not the prophet? John replied, I baptize you with water, but there stands among you, unknown to you, the one who is coming after me, and I am not fit to undo his sandal strap. This happened at Bethany, on the far side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear children and parents at home, you might notice something different today, and very rarely does this happen. Do you know what it is, children? Yes you would notice that I'm using a pink or a rose-coloured chasuble. And it's very rare. It's only twice in the church's liturgical year where the priest wears this coloured chasuble. Why? And you notice, children, we have just lit the Advent wreath, the third candle, the candle of joy. And that is in what colour? Pink. And this pink, or some other places we call this rose-coloured, it is to symbolize the joy and the hope. Why? Because Christ indeed is coming. 
The first week of Advent, we celebrated hope. The second week of Advent, we celebrated peace. And today, we're celebrating this joy. And finally, on the fourth Sunday of Advent, we'll light the fourth candle, a purple candle, which is to symbolize love. Hope, peace, joy and love. Now, these things remind us so proudly of what it means to be a Christian. And that is why today, children, as we hear the very beginning of John's Gospel, we are not told about how Jesus was born because John's Gospel is one of the other two Gospels that does not have what we call the infancy narrative. And the other Gospel is the Gospel of Mark. So Mark and John, the Gospels of Mark and John, do not have anything about the birth of Jesus, only the Gospel of Luke and the Gospel of Matthew. And that is where many of you perhaps will be involved with children, uh, children's pageant or, or Christmas celebrations and paintings. Please talk about the birth of Jesus. But today in our Gospel, in the Gospel of John, we go straight into this. The first few verses, the first three verses of the Gospel of John will talk about in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and that Word dwelt amongst us. Finished. That's how it starts about the birth of Jesus. But today, from verses 6 to 8, and then 19 to 28 onwards, we suddenly are introduced to another person, another character. That is, a man came sent by God. Who is this man, you might be asking children? The Gospel writer tells us his name was John. John the Baptist, we know of him. What was John's role? We are told he came as a witness, as a witness to speak for the light, so that everyone might believe through him. But he was not the light. He was only a witness to speak for the light. Now, this is very important, children. You know why? Because the season of Advent every year has a very important character, and that character is the person of John the Baptist. Why? Because in the life of John the Baptist, if you look at all the other three Gospels, the life of John the Baptist is but to prepare for the coming of the Messiah. And we know that John was saying, because he had a strong following, huh? and we know that his role was just to bear witness. That is what you and I are called to do as Christians, to bear witness. To bear witness to what? To bear witness to the light. And notice, because John had a very strong following, when people ask him, the Jewish people ask him, or the Pharisees ask him, who are you? Are you the, one of the prophets? John said, no. Are you Elijah? John said, no. Are you the Christ? John said, no. John the Baptist was able to defer, to transfer all the glory and all the, the, the honour that he had received onto the Messiah. That is what we ought to do, children. When we do something good, we strive not for pride, not for glory, but we want to do it to glorify God, to honour God, to honour Jesus Christ. The example of John the Baptist is so beautiful for us to help us to live lives, selfless life, so that God can be glorified. And do you know what, children? As I started off the Mass earlier on, here in our di Archdiocese of Singapore, we have just launched this weekend 200 years celebration of the presence of the Catholic Church. And what we are emphasizing here is how the church for the past 200 years have borne witness to society around us. We have seen it through healthcare, through education, through medicine. We have seen in society how the church had been influential in how when Singapore was founded. And this is very important for us because it re reminds us, it helps us to see what our vocation henceforth is all about. It is not about living for ourselves. It is about living for Christ so that Christ can be made known through our acts of mercy, through our generosity with time, sharing our gifts and talents, through education, through healthcare, through social work. That was how the church started. And that was how John the Baptist began to bear witness to Christ. And when the Jewish people asked him, what have you to say for yourself? John humbly replied, I am 
as how Isaiah prophesied. Now, the prophet Isaiah lived about seven centuries before the time of Jesus. And what did the prophet Isaiah say? He prophesied that a voice that cries in the wilderness, make a straight way for the Lord. In other words, what John said that Isaiah had already prophesied was his role in the whole history of salvation was to prepare for the coming of Christ. And that is what you and I are called to do. You and I are called to prepare the way for Christ, to make Christ present in our world. And we believe through the celebration of Christmas that Jesus is already present in our society. But sometimes, either through our blindness, through our selfishness, we cannot recognize Christ's presence, right, children? Why? Because we are so engrossed with our own desires, our own hobbies. We are so, we are so preoccupied with what we want to do to satisfy ourselves. And it's on occasions like these that sometimes we look to the wrong source of light. We do not look at the light of Christ, but we look at other sources of light. For instance, maybe when we feel lonely, we occupy our time with our mobile devices. We go onto social media. We spend hours upon hours. Some of us spend hours just scrolling and scrolling and shopping. And others just go through our Instagram, our TikTok accounts, our Facebook accounts, just to get connected with the world. At the end of the day, we feel our time has wasted. Some of us even stumble onto undesirable websites, to undesirable videos. And that is when we know, especially when it accompanies a sense of guilt, a sense of remorse, we know that that's not the true light. We may have been looking at the wrong places. Children, think about it. If you lost something in the dark or it's night time, what do you need? You need your flashlight, you need a torchlight, right? Some of us would use our mobile phones and switch on the light to look for the things that we have lost. That is what Jesus, or that is the reason why Jesus came, to provide that light, that guidance for you and I. And it is the light of Christ that gives us moral guidance, gives us principles, gives us this attitude to shine for others. In the teachings of the church, or through the teachings of the church, we are given that light, that light is to share with one another. And yes, children, celebrating this third Sunday of Advent brings us hope, brings us peace. And more importantly, it brings joy. Joy that you will see that we want to share with others because we do not keep our joy to ourselves. And so, my dear friends, dear family, the parents at home, we recognize that our faith has to be shared. The joy of our faith has to be shared with one another. Let us think about it in this coming week. How do I want to proclaim this joy of knowing Christ Jesus to the world around me? In this reflection you have, we ask the Lord for the courage, especially in times when we fear darkness, in the times when we fear to take that extra step, to take the risk of sharing this joy with others. Perhaps it could be with someone whom we have had a soured relationship, someone whom we need to reach out to a lonely person, an elderly person. This is the time of the season of Advent to share this joy and to take the leap of faith. God bless you all. Amen. And now, dear children and parents at home, we let us stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With joy in our hearts, we turn to our Heavenly Father with our prayers and petitions. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop William, all priests and clergy, that they lead the Church to use this time profitably, joining in prayer and acts of penitence to prepare for the coming of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of all nations and all faiths, that they seek truth and light and the healing of the divisions and conflicts that spread darkness over all the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may proclaim the joy of the gospel to the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations that men and women called by the Lord to be messengers of his word as priests and religious in the consecrated life will come forth to zealously proclaim the good news of salvation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For prisoners, migrants, refugees and homeless people, that they will know that God cares for them through the kindness, generosity, and care of people attending to them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold silently in our hearts and those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, hear us as we pray and prepare our hearts for the celebration of your Son's birth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, 
His wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to His second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Pope and William our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And now, children, we enter into a spiritual communion. As we invite Jesus to come into our hearts, we ask him to give us this opportunity to be light to one another in this coming week. We invite all those watching to make an act of spiritual communion with a spirit of gratefulness, thanking God for his infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for the blessing. May the Almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of His only begotten Son, and yearn for His second coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with His blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, May he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. C
so that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when He comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Spirit.